Okay guys, today we're working on a 69 Ford pickup and you might recognize this as the heater core and uh, we've got an issue right there where we've got a leak. And we've got another leak way down in there. Honestly not sure if I can fix that one but we're going to attempt it. But today I'm going to show you how to fix this right here. As you can see, I'm using both my hands. Yes, I did break down, get out the tripod and the good camera. No cell phone today. Anyway, you might see that we've got a torch sitting here. And a lot of people, their, their first inclination is grab the torch. Heat up the core, or heat up a radiator. Um, let me caution you highly, unless you're very good with operating a torch and knowing how to play heat on your uh, core, the results are going to be disastrous and you're just going to be wasting your time, your gas, and your money because something that could have been repaired is going to be junk. Um, the way to do that, especially with a torch, a lot of times is fill your core up with water and uh, up to a point because what will happen is you'll be playing your heat in here and in just a matter of seconds the whole solder joint just melts away and you have to redo all that so we are not going to do that we're going to use a soldering copper and uh, you see the copper they call it a copper because it has a big chunk of copper. You got a steel shank and a wooden insulating handle. Um, this is the way this kind of stuff was done either with a gasoline torch or with a propane furnace where you would slide your copper inside the furnace. That's the way the old, the old guys who did guttering did it. Um, we're going to go old school today, but we're not going to go that old school. Sorry. You know, that's, that's one I keep on the shelf. There is an old one buried in the garage somewhere that I do use occasionally, like every several years. Don't remember exactly where it's at, and I'm not going to take the time to dig for it. So, this was just for illustration. Uh, we are going to use the copper. We're not going to use the torch. We're going to be using this. But we're going to be using this to heat the copper then use the copper to heat the heater core. So if everything goes well, and you bear with me, we'll get this done. Okay, I realized I forgot a few things, namely my lighter and then some safety equipment. Uh, when you're soldering on anything old like this, you have to realize there are fumes. And on this particular instance, you're going to have lead fumes. You're going to have old antifreeze and old stop leak burning off, which creates fumes. Uh, ethylene glycol is toxic. Uh, you've probably heard many times of women poisoning their husbands uh, with antifreeze. Uh, yeah, it's very effective. We've also got acid core solder. And uh, so you've got the acid flux fumes. If you're doing one or two little joints, anything is better than nothing. Okay, this is a, a particulate or a dust mask. This is a NIOSH 95, so it's an N95. It does have a breather valve in it, makes it a lot easier to breathe. But if you're doing very much, a regular respirator, this is an old one I hang in the garage, but a regular respirator, you can get these at Lowe's or places like O'Reilly's that sell paint supplies and everything. Um, protect yourselves, guys. Safety glasses, too. Uh, sometimes this stuff spits and sputters. You know, be safe. Well, now that I've done that uh, due diligence, let's see if we can get this sucker going. We're going to bleed our hoses. See if we can do this without burning some hair off.
You do not need a very high flame to heat this copper up because we're not trying to cut it, we're just wanting to warm it. Even with this torch, it's going to take a little while to get her up to heat. Plus, we're outside in the wind. That doesn't help. You'll see the copper start to change colors. That's what happens as it heats up. When it gets good and hot, it'll be a real dark color. Almost a blue. See that cobalt blue? We're getting hot. Okay, so I should have put my mask on first, but you know, we don't always do things in the order we're supposed to, so I'm gonna turn this off, throw my mask on, see if we can get this joint soldered. No matter what you think, it doesn't, doesn't matter how hard you push with a soldering iron. The transfer of your heat happens from the solder itself. And I may have to, there we go. You want to get a little bit of solder in a spot. You want to touch that to the metal. Okay, now see you've got it steaming. Try to get a little more in there. That'll help transfer the heat. And right now I'm just dipping some of the acid down in that joint and I'm testing to see how hot it is. Okay, it's not quite hot enough yet. The copper's hot, but the brass radiator is not yet. starting to get there. And you may have to do this several times because it's been decades that crud's been boiling out of this joint and seeping. And you have to get rid of that stuff. You have to boil it out of there basically. So we may have to go another round. We're starting to cool off now. It did stick a little bit, but we're cooling off, so we're going to go another heat round. I know you're tempted to take this torch and just put it on there and heat up the radiator, but don't do it. I've done it, and trust me. <laughs> you don't want the results. And I've learned the hard way. I can do one with a torch, or at least I have done one with a torch in the past. But like I said, you got to fill them up with water, put them in a water bath. You, you have to be very careful. This is a little slower process, but not when you ruin one and you have to start all over. Try her again. Find my good spot. I should have actually cleaned this a little better where the solder would stick a little better. And one of the main reasons I'm, I'm fixing this old one is this is a good old brass heater core 
Um, stuff nowadays is aluminum with plastic tanks and all that. And I'm sure you can still get these old brass ones, but I called O'Reilly's and they couldn't even give me a price. It was a special order item. I mean, you know, this truck's 47 years old and uh, it was a special order item. We was gonna have to wait till Monday to even get a price. And uh, there, now we're getting some heat. And you know, just like always, I've got work to do. So I'm trying to fix this thing. It belongs to my son. He's working part time. He doesn't have a lot of money to uh, sink into the old truck, but it does need to be safe and it does need to work. So, you know, dad to the rescue. And, uh, you know, this is also just, it's a good, it's a good skill to have. Uh, I learned this from my dad. I learned it from another old gentleman that did guttering. Uh, thankfully, dad's still around. The other man is not. Uh, you need to learn what you can from the people while they're still here. Okay, we still got a little hole right there I'd really like to get. And yeah, if you can see it, there's a big blob of solder on there. But that big blob of solder is not going to affect your airflow noticeably. And it's better to have a big blob of solder on there sealing the hole than a little amount of solder that's just going to break loose later. This old truck's not bad. It's about 15 minutes. Take the heater core out. But still, that's time you could be doing something else. Okay, it's kind of ugly, it's kind of gaudy, and we'll test it with air here in a little bit, but I think that one's fixed. Now this one over here, <laughs> this one over here I've got to excavate it and get down to it, um, and I may have to knock some of these out and solder them up to get to it, but uh, guys it can be done. There it is. Uh, don't necessarily throw something away just because it doesn't work properly when you get it. Thanks for watching.